Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And finally, something I can agree with on with President Trump, and that is the abortion, uh, uh, the serious situation in America about abortion. And he came out today, Trump urges the U.S. to cherish the dignity and sanctity of life at a national prayer breakfast. Uh, you know, hey, at least there's a good thing that we can see that comes out of the White House. Uh, but unfortunately, as the title states on the video and everything, Russia and the United States seem to be duking it out over who controls what assets of the world. I guess in reality, though, it has really nothing to do with control over who gets to control what, but rather the setting up a new world order. And I think that they're both very much complicit in working together on that. I want to play something here for you, though. Uh, this is, uh, if U.S. intervenes, it will have another Vietnam War, War, according to RT, a little link that was published right here. Play that for you guys here just real quick there. And then we're going to be looking at some very interesting things because, as of what I can see, it, the war really starts in the media. Propaganda, of course, always out there in every corner you can possibly look at here. So let's take a look at what RT was saying here about uh, Maduro and Guaido, the two that are in a battle for who gets to control Venezuela, which ultimately is either either Russia's man or the United States man. Let's take a listen. President has sent a warning to his people. Nicolas Maduro says they shouldn't trust the faked version of events in the country that the United States is trying to promote. He even went further, threatening the U.S. with a second Vietnam-like war. Since they cannot fake Venezuela and Maduro having weapons of mass destruction to intervene against us, they now make up lies on a daily basis and false news to justify aggression against our country. Let's not allow another war like Vietnam in Latin America. If the government of the United States intends to intervene against us, they will have another Vietnam, worse than you can imagine. Well, that's what we're seeing right there from Maduro on RT, and uh, it's kind of interesting because he mentions about the fake, not so much fake news, but it's the propaganda. And I ran across this one particular article right here, and this is on um, uh, South Front. U.S. already made decision to use force in Venezuela, according to the Russian Foreign Ministry, and that was Maria Zakharova that spoke about that. And the article here says there are still signs coming from Washington about the possibility of using force in order to overthrow the legal authorities, including through direct military invasion. This is actually being spoken about openly in the White House. I would like to recall that this kind of statement from, this, from the mouth of American officials is a direct violation of Article 2, Paragraph 4 of the UN Charter ordering UN members to refrain from the threat of use of force in international relations. Zakharova, uh, she stressed in an open statement herself. Now, here's what's interesting, though. I was watching this video that they had posted here on South Front. This is very interesting because you're going to find out in this video here that uh, uh, something that kind of caught me by surprise as well is that the very men that they use as defected, defecting uh, soldiers that are trying to get other soldiers to defect are actually wearing uniforms that are outdated. Listen into this. The intensity of anti-government protests in Venezuela has declined despite attempts of the US-led bloc to warm them up through both public and clandestine measures. However, the conflict continues to develop amid the acute standoff in the media sphere between the Maduro government and its opponents who are backed by the US-led bloc. On January the 29th, CNN released an interview with two Venezuelan army defectors who appealed to US President Donald Trump to arm them to defend freedom in Venezuela. They claimed to be in contact with hundreds of willing defectors via WhatsApp groups and called on Venezuelan soldiers to revolt against the government of President Nicolas Maduro. As Venezuelan soldiers, we are making a request to the US to support us in logistical terms with communication with weapons so we can realize Venezuelan freedom, one of the alleged defectors, Guillen Martinez, told CNN. Another one, Hidalgo Azuaje, added, we're not saying that we need only U.S. support, but also Brazil, Colombia, Peru, 
all brother countries that are against this dictatorship. During the entire clip, these persons were presented in a manner alleging that they had just recently defected and are now calling on others to follow their step. However, therein lies the problem. There it goes. Their uniform say FAN, Fuerza Armada Nacionales. This is an outdated pattern which has been dropped. Now Venezuela's service members have a different badge, FANB, which means Fuerza Armada Nacional Boliviana. So either the Venezuelan army defectors somehow lost the letter B from their uniform, or the entire interview is a staged show involving former Venezuelan service members who've been living for a long time outside the country, or, in the worst case, actors. The interview came amid increasing U.S. political media. Kind of interesting, isn't it? Another staged event, no doubt, and this seems to always be the case. What can you expect, though, if uh, you want to try to win the war in the media? You have to stage some kind of nonsense to get the rest of the world to believe it. And who make, makes you also wonder about these uh, rallies for Guaido? Are they really the numbers that they're showing and the images that are coming from these uh, particular protest rallies? Or have those been altered and faked as well? That's well, not too hard to do. All you have to do is get someone that knows a little bit more about that type of imagery work to see for themselves. At any rate, <clears throat> let's continue on. Another one that came out was really interesting too is this article here that came out on uh, Reuters with border block desperate Venezuelans ask how U.S. aid will arrive. Well, it seems like the U.S. has already figured out one way they could arrive, according to the article right here. And this has also been on RT, but Yeni Safak reported Venezuela sees a shipment of U.S.-made weapons sent from Miami. The authorities seized 19 rifles, 118 ammunition clips, high-caliber ammo, and 90 communication devices. I guess the WhatsApp is not always going to work in Venezuela, so you definitely got to have some walkie-talkies. Venezuelan authorities on Wednesday seized a large shipment of U.S.-made weapons sent aboard a cargo plane that had arrived from a Miami, Florida. Photos of the weapons bust, uh, bust were shared on the official Twitter account of the Venezuelan Public Safety Bureau showing a large number of arms and munitions laid out by the police. The authorities seized 19 rifles. Of course, we already know that and how much that was. The seized weapon shipment arrived aboard a plane that landed on February the 3rd at the Arturo uh, Mecalina International Airport in the city of Valencia. An investigation was launched by Venezuelan authorities in an attempt to identify the source of the weapon shipment. Well, seems like somebody's trying to get weapons in. And normally when you see a small shipment like that, that's not really a large cache of weapons. That's looking to see if they can get the weapons in in the first place. I already know how that goes. Uh, if you see you can get them in through that particular means, all right, now go your next step and send a larger shipment of weapons in. I guess they just figured the Venezuelan were pretty stupid and they could get it past them. Not to say, like I said before, I don't say that Maduro is some kind of saint by no means. It, to me, it's just obvious they are working on a new world order. And Venezuela's got to fall into compliance. And I guess Maduro just hasn't been the compliance boy that they wanted him to be. Yeah, maybe that's where the issue stems from. Who knows? At any rate. As we move on here to the next uh, frame here, another one that I thought was interesting, State Department, Mr. Abrams. Don't forget Mr. Abrams. This is a good old boy there that, uh, you know, was involved in the Iran-Contra scandal. Oh, yeah, I already know about that, too. You know, this is the guy that helped make sure that the Contras were getting their weapons from Iran. We were Listen up to 48 countries around the world that have recognized him. As many of you know, there are meetings yesterday um, <clears throat> today in Uruguay about the crisis in Venezuela, one, a, uh, an Uruguay and Mexico-led meeting, another, the International Contact Group on Venezuela. Uh, instead of trying to accommodate Maduro through contact groups or dialogue, we urge countries to recognize Juan Guaido as interim president and join us in responding to his call for immediate international humanitarian assistance to meet the needs of the Venezuelan people. Humanitarian assistance. I guess that'll be another shipment of weapons. That's something Mr. Abrams is very good at. Knows just how to do it. 
I can tell you a little bit about that, how that really works. We won't go into that, though, today. Not here on Israeli News Live, anyway. Uh, also, TASS News, Putin and Maduro may discuss new measures to support Venezuela's economy. Now, this is back from December the 4th, but this is another reason why we can see the United States stepping up their efforts to overthrow Maduro, because Russia keeps digging its uh, feet inside of Venezuela. We know that Venezuela is also manufacturing some of the military uh, vehicles for Russia, uh, a part of the stimulus for the economy that Putin agreed with uh, Maduro on back some time ago. But uh, this oil, no, they're not going to have that. Same thing like in Syria. Pipeline had to go through uh, Syria. And, of course, the Americans, along with their partners, the Saudis, etc., uh, you know, all these different groups out there in, in the region there, wanted it to go through Syria. And then, of course, right to the port of Haifa, which China has their own... Uh, uh, interest in that particular region. You know, I was told by a good friend of mine in Israel one time as well, if you really want to see why wars are going to be fought, where they're going to be fought, all you got to do is follow the oil, then you'll know for sure that's exactly where the next oil fight and battle will actually take place at. Of course, he also let me know too that this was the reason for the Venezuelan situation now. They don't want Russia to get a hold of it, and if it means going to war with Russia to stop them, that's what they'll exactly do. They will go to war with Russia. Well, while all that's going on, we also have the situation, this is from, coming from New China, their news source, Israel-U.S. to hold major joint military exercises next week amid regional tensions there. U.S. and Israel will be conducting those, uh, tra that training there while all this situation going on with Iran. In fact, there's another article that just came out on the Jerusalem Post that is saying that Russia has actually bombed bridges uh, on the Euphrates River that were part of Iranian assets. I haven't been able to get a second confirmation on that to be uh, if that's actually so, but it would not surprise me, as I've stated over and over and over, everybody looks at Russia like the big bad boogeyman that's going to attack Israel. Uh, if that were to happen, I would have to say it's a coordinated effort. But uh, from what I can see, President Putin is far more an ally to Israel than what most people ever give credit for. Anyway, it says the Israeli and U.S. militias, mil, excuse me, militaries will hold a major joint uh, military exercise in Israel next week. The Israeli army said Thursday as the most significant joint exercise between the United States and Israel for 2019. The Juniper Falcon 19 will be held from Sunday to Thursday, according to a statement by the Israeli army. The exercise will involve the U.S. European Command and several Israeli units, including the Air Defense Array, the Planning and Operations Directorate, as well as logistic and medical units. Uh, and also, too, speaking of these things here, Israel uncovers a new Iranian precision missile factory in Syria. And I can understand why that would be a concern for Israel. But then again, precision missile, missile factories, they're practically in every country in the world, uh, especially developed nations such as the U.S. We have plenty of those here. They have them in Israel. They have them all over the world. But there again, Israel's not very happy about uh, the Iranians building this type of facility, alleged, I should say, uh, inside of Syria. And that I can understand. Uh, also, a Kurdish commander laments America's betrayal and urges U.S. to be loyal. That's pretty strong words right there. And, you know, I can understand why. The Kurds have been betrayed not only by the U.S. They've been betrayed by Russia. President Putin betrayed them. President uh, Trump has betrayed them. All the different uh, allies have betrayed these people that were hoping, even as the article says here, uh, that they might get a part of, uh, 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 you know, a say so. Let me put it here. When the war ended, the United States would make sure the Kurds get a say in the redistribution of power, resources in Syria, and perhaps a semi independent state. But since President Donald Trump announced that past December that the United States would be withdrawing from Syria, he feels betrayed. Hmm. We became comrades in arms with American, French, British soldiers, all of us in one trench. Uh, Ken told uh, Foreign Policy in an interview by phone from Syria, friends must be loyal to each other and ensure each other's safety. That should not betray each other uh, or give up their friend in difficult times. Let me just say this to the man that the Kurdish man that actually wrote this. Keep this in mind. American soldiers would never want to leave you or betray you in any way because they American soldiers are loyal to, in this in this way. But you have to understand American soldiers are also under command 
Uh, and if the chief commander, such in this case here as President Trump says, you're going to leave in the country, they don't have much uh, say so in the matter. And uh, so it's whatever the political atmosphere is in the world or deep state atmosphere, whichever one comes first, right? That's the way it goes. China, Russia trade blame after Israeli strike destroys air defenses in Syria. This is something, even though it just came out yesterday, February the 6th, this article in the World Tribune actually highlights an incident that happened on January the 20th. Uh, and it's kind of interesting there. Both Russia and China were blaming each other because they both have air defense systems there. The Russians were saying that it was the Chinese air defense systems that did not give an early warning system when the F-35 uh, fighter jets entered into Syria, destroying uh, Iranian military training camps, killing 11 Iranian elite uh, Quds force troops, uh, demolishing an Iranian intelligence center, and also the strike destroyed most of the air defense systems near Damascus International Airport which was heavily guarded by China air, uh, China's air defense radars and Russian air defense, the Panzer S-1, that is, and China's J-1, JY-27 long-range air warning radar. That's kind of odd that they just don't have the technology to be able to track the F-35, and yet there's been so much um, talk that they have that ability. But it seems like since then, Russia's been moving the S-300 system up online so they can start detecting this, uh, or is it just something that they're both working on together? I kind of think that Russia and China could really give a flip less about the Syrian government or President Bashar al-Assad and his uh, part of being in power. And I say that because you got to remember the Chinese are very much involved in building in the port in Haifa, and they will also get the other port in Ashdod coming up in the very near future. And they are greatly involved in a new world order. Russia also is greatly involved in a new world order. In fact, if you ever watch closely on RT, I always kind of thought this was interesting. Even though I like RT's broadcasting a lot, look at their intro program on there. You can't help but see that Star of David pops up on the screen and rotates off. But that's a lot of things a lot of people don't really pay attention to. Uh, but yeah, I can't help but wonder if they just do the blame game in order to be able to take the spotlight off of themselves. They just turned off the systems so that they didn't pick up the F-35s. That's the reality of it, because after all, they all have a stake in a new world order. I'm Stephen Benin with Israeli News Live. Shalom. In a world of Ain Shalom, there is no peace.